Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. Today we're holding our monthly tech meet at my shop and we're going to be working on steering racks. I'm going to show you how to take them apart, put them back together and hopefully make them work. Okay, rack number two. Here we go. This one, as you can see, is, is different. We talked about this earlier. It still has the same basic uh, uh, function. You have a high pressure in, you have a low pressure return, you have the two directions. Uh, this is missing a boot, but the boot, as you can see, will be covering all this in here. So these generally are always kept uh, dry or at least with lubricant in there instead of water and, and uh, uh, electrolysis, whatever it is. So these are a little bit easier to get apart, I think. They're a little trickier putting together. So we got to take our lines off. This already has some plastic plugs on it from to keep. What year was this one? I forget what year they came. They came out in the 80s with this one, I believe. Yeah. And if you, I think if you can still buy them from rolls, uh, this is what you're going to get, something like this. They tried to get rid of all the old ones, in my opinion. So we'll go ahead and, and you want to use, in my opinion, a tubing wrench. Just so you know what a tubing wrench is. Instead of a full box on the end, like a normal box stand, you look at the big difference, there's a gap, and that's so you can get it over it too. All right? And you also notice it, it's got a lot more beef around it. Since it doesn't have that connecting part, something really tight, it's going to spread. Uh, and they're usually a lot thicker all the way around. Even the, the open end, if you look at it, it's much beefier. It's designed not to spread out. And you see me hit it with my hand, which I don't recommend if you're going to do it, at least use a rag. But sometimes that little jarring effect knocks them loose. If they don't come loose and they just round, because first of all, you've got two problems. This right here is open, so it's going to spread. And this part right here is not solid. It's, a, it's hollow on the inside, so it's going to squeeze in. Uh, that's when, if a, you get one that's stuck, sometimes you can just clamp it really good with one of these and then hit it with a hammer and just knock it loose if you have access. But so far we've been lucky on this. These have a banjo fitting instead of another tubing fitting on the other end. And the only reason I can think of why they call it a banjo fitting <laughs> It's because it kind of looks like a banjo, right? Right? Okay, so it has, what it has is it has a bowl going through it that's hollowed out also, and it has a couple of metal, combination metal. They're called dowdy seals, or I think. They have a steel washer that has a rubber bonded to it. That is the same seal, by the way, that comes with the early canister style oil filter. So if you want to use those, it's fine. This is a new one right there. You want to pass that around. You see the rubber sticks out, so it compresses. No, I'm good. Okay. that the other end oh this is loose okay so let's pull off the top of this the spool valve on this one and you'll see a big difference <coughs> it's oriented the same way the only thing that's really important on these especially when you get to the airbag cars is uh, if you look at this tower, 
Okay, if you look, it's got a slot that goes all the way around. That's for, there's a clamp that looks similar to this butcher tool I made, but it has, this is a part of an old steering shaft. It fits on there and it slides down and a bolt goes through there through this gap to, to tighten it. Now if you look at this spool, it's got a flat on one side. So what that means is when you take it apart, you got to put it back in so it faces the same direction. Otherwise, your steering wheel is going to be like this. And with an airbag car, you can't just pull it off and center it. Uh, you'll end up having to buy an airbag reel. Uh, so this is very critical. Plus, if, whenever you pull this out, first of all, you're going to change the mesh. So it's, it's going to change everything. Uh, so the easy thing on these early ones is to center the steering wheel. First of all, the steering wheel is real easy to center on. But second of all, you can pull this off and turn it infinitely to find that near center spot. This one you can't. You don't have that much error because that bolt goes through and you might have one or two teeth in either direction to, to, to compensate for that. A good rule of thumb to remember is, in my experience, the flat always faces the, the oil pan. There's an oil pan right here when it's on the car. This always faces that when you're in center position. And there's an easy way to do that when we, when I take it apart, it'll, it'll, you can uh, see that. So anybody doing this at home, make sure you pay close attention if you have one of these with the flat on the uh, spool valve. Okay. So this has this almost exactly the same situation underneath. You can see it's got this seal plate with an O-ring. It has this housing, but this seal doesn't have a snap ring. And this piece right here, I don't, I've never been able to find one. So there's, a, don't worry, there's, we have a solution. Um, now let's see, this is already lifted up. This has, doesn't even have it. Oh yeah, there's the shim washers. That's what centers it. <coughs> I'm just lifting this up. This seal is pretty hard. But that's the pressure seal here. And these do not, I'm going to pull this off. This is a spring-loaded tensioner. It's supposed to be spring-loaded. There it is. Okay. See how easy it comes out now? So if you look at this pinion, it's square cut. So that's why they don't have shims at the bottom of the plate because it's not tapered so that you can adjust the mesh. What holds the mesh on this is this part out here. Let's see if I can get it out. problems I can't see and I'm using the wrong tool. Let's see if this will do it. There it is. So what this has, this is like a big hard plastic PFTE or whatever it is, guide that rubs against the rack and holds it tight against there. And it's it's got a spring and a washer behind it. So that applies the tension and it is also adjustable. So if you need to take up any extra play, uh, you can do that. And I want to show you inside here, you look in, if you look inside this hole, you can pull this, there's a little Allen screw that goes inside that is like a plug. The other rack has the same hole in it. If you look at the housing right here, see that bolt? You take that bolt out, let me do that real quick. It's just a way you can find the center of the rack. So that hole can correspond with this. You'll see inside here in that rack. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a little divot on the rack. Yeah. See, there's a little divot. And then this rack also has a divot. Where'd it go? Oh, 
thought they did. That's interesting. Let's wipe it down and see who swore they did. Oh, there it is. I knew it. Okay. So what you can do is you can take a tapered Allen screw or bolt with a point on it, and you can screw it in the hole and move the rack back and forth until you find the center. And you can actually hold it there if you need to. Uh, which, like I said, on the early racks, it's not critical because you can put the steering knuckle on any way you want, but on these it is. So this also has that divot so that you can get this. So when you install it on the car, now it's going to go essentially this direction, this flat facing oil pan. So you can keep turning it in there when it's in the center until you get it close to that orientation. You got a couple teeth one way or the other to center it. All right, here we go. Let's get this out of the way.